as a shop and as a consumer, this is something that needs to be insisted upon in order to repair the car properly. If you don't do one or both, or I think both myself, sure, then there's uh, no uh, telling. How do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Airing of Grievances. I'm Eric Raymer. That's Robert Grieve, and we are ever so thankful that you are here today, and we have a great episode for you. It's uh, it's going to be eye-opening, I hope. And We always hope. Yeah, absolutely. As always, we encourage Rich you. in one hand, and I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we encourage you to connect with us, join us, if you will, uh, in, in the comment section or as we're doing the premiere live, you can chat live with us. Uh, in addition to that, if it's your first time here, don't forget to click the subscribe button and that notify bell. That, ding, ding. That makes uh, everybody know that uh, we're airing another episode. And of course, if you're one of our regular family, we are so grateful for you. No matter who you are, if you like what you see, give us the thumbs up. Please. That tells YouTube that uh, this is content that's worthy of being viewed. All right. Yes. Rob, happy Saturday to you. To you and to all you tuning in, thank you so much for being here. It means the world to us. Absolutely. All right, uh, Rob, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, the state of cars and the technology that goes into them today. We were talking just a little bit before this uh, about the uh, 1973 AMC Gremlin that I used to have. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you, you can actually climb into the motor... And, and tinker around. And They're a little bit different, and you have to be careful who you take advice from. Yeah. Let, let's just tell that little story. You, you asked me, yeah. somebody told you that you need to have your transmission flushed on your 19 uh, Hyundai... 2019 uh, Hyundai Tucson. Yeah. So I said, well, let's, let's go to the owner's manual. I mean, it's a nice place to go. Everybody's got one with their car. If yeah. you don't, you can go to the degweb.org and pull down uh, your own owner's manual. Yeah. And lo and behold, what did it say in the owner's manual about flushing your transmission? Never needs to be done. They're different. <laughs> and stop listening to people that don't know. Well, go, go to the book. I was listening to somebody who wants to sell me a, a transmission flush. Oh, how about that? $199. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it says in bold letters right across all the mileage, not needed. Doesn't need it. Yep. So, wow. you know, there's, there's two things that, that I've been... I don't want to say harping on, but trying to bring to people's attention. And first is the vehicles are changing. Yeah. And they are far more sophisticated today than they ever have before. And they're getting more sophisticated by every day. Sure. Some of it is the manufacturers wanting to have the latest and the greatest protection for their consumers. Yep. Some of it is mandated by government agency like NHTSA or... That's the National you know, Highway Transportation Safety Administration. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it comes from a lot of different areas. Even the insurance companies like it because it cuts down on crashes. Okay. So, um, so first thing is vehicles are getting far more complex than they've ever been before. Stop listening to people that don't know. Secondly. Duly noted. <laughs> <laughs> second, all shops are not created equal. Yeah. They may or may not have the tools and the technical ability and the understanding and the availability of the procedures or even the wherewithal to look up procedures yeah. uh, on how to properly repair your vehicle. And, you know, I kind of urge you to look for a, you know, I want to say OEM, but a manufacturer uh, certified collision repair shop okay uh, rather than just any kind of a shop uh, and, and it's, it's important because you know they're required to have a certain set of tools a certain set of knowledge base certain set of procedures yeah that are all around your vehicle and you know it, it that's your best bet it sure makes a difference if, if they've got the the education and the Ability 
supposed to, but we've done a video about about that before, and I hope we'll throw a link up here. I sure will. There it is. Um, but I want to go and, and, and start with this picture. Yep. Um, and, and let's just look at this picture for a second. Yep. You know, here's a car with, with all of the advanced driver assist systems on it. Sure. And you take a look at this car. Now, your car... Now, assume this is a new car. Yep. Or this car can be three years old and sure. have all this stuff on it. Uh, but even if you buy a brand new car today or last year, you're going to have at least some of these, if not all of these. Yep. And if you look at this car and all the circles around it, somebody tell me where you can have an accident on that car and it not affect one of these systems. It's pretty much all covered. It, it, yeah, that doesn't exist. It, it would definitely affect anywhere if you got hit. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and you have to have the understanding of the different radars and LIDARs and cameras and ultrasounds and sonars and all the rest of that and some are short distance and long range right. and uh, pedestrian protection and all that is getting built into the cars that are coming out on the road today yep and uh, so this this covers the point that I want to bring up about the cars are not the same as they used to be sure they are very, very complex, and if you have an accident in any one of these corners or on either one of these sides, yeah. something is going to need to be recalibrated. Sure. So, let's talk about shops. All right. So, I'm going to go find this other nifty graph, and we're going to talk about something that I've talked about before. Oh, yeah. Um, and... You've heard me talk about pre and post scanning and how important they are. Yeah. The same thing is, you know, you go into the doctor and, you know, you're sick. Yeah. They're going to do a few things. You don't even have to ask for them. They're going to do them. They're going to yeah. get yeah. your weight. They're going to get, you know, your temperature, yeah. grab your pulse. Yep. You know, and depending on those things, now they're going to have some other tests possibly for those you. Those give you information as yeah. to what could possibly be wrong. And if you walk in with a fever... And they don't take your temperature. Wouldn't that make you? Hmm. That would cause alarm. I know you look horrible, but uh, <laughs> I think we should get your temperature anyway. We know it's not going to be there, but they're going to document what it is yes. today when they're talking to you. Yes. So they can know if whatever treatment they do are it, is getting Effective. you relief. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same thing with a pre and a post scan. And essentially what that is, is us plugging a computer into your car, which is a computer. There's yeah. a port in your car called an Ethernet port, or it's a, called an OBD2. But in your car, you know, just think of it as you had a computer and you plug something into it. Yep. We plug a computer into your car. Yeah. It scans all the systems and, and, and comes up with what they call a health check. And will let us know if it's burped or it's, it's something's not operating as designed or so many different things that you have to know this yeah. before you can fix the car sure. properly. And the sooner you know it, the more complete the estimate or appraisal or blueprint or whatever it can be. Okay. And this is all important to the car functioning as designed. That makes sense to me. Um, so, in this graph that uh, we're going to throw up here right now, this this is out of uh, CCC Intelligent Solutions. So, CCC is an estimating system, which is the widest used here in America mm -hmm. uh, by both insurers and shops. Yeah. So, we use this system to write estimates and blueprints and repair plans, all the rest of that. Uh, and... They gather data off of all these hundreds of thousands of computers that are using the software. Sure. And uh, it's a little big brotherish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if you look at just the first section here, this is a current year or newer, which I'm not sure how much newer a current year could be. But yeah. uh, if another vehicle just came out, usually in August or September, you know, that might be the be, next year yes. and not the current year. Understood. So, uh, 
current year or newer. Yeah. All right. So if we're talking about a car today, it's going to be a 22 or 23. Because mm -hmm. we do have 23s coming in here. Sure. And uh, uh, dramatically different than the 22s. Really? With, with some, of their, uh, some of their things that we need to know. And the wrong person working on some of these cars can get in some pretty hot water pretty quick. With as simple as the doors won't open. <laughs> There's procedures for everything now. I guess. And uh, even CCC recommends that you look up the OEM procedures. Um, but going back to this graph real quick. Yes. We see the, the first bar, that little tiny bar, that's back in 17. And what these graphs are is estimates that contain a pre-scan and or a post-scan. Okay. Uh, which every manufacturer suggests you do both. The manufacturer suggests. Yeah. Not always uh, on the same page with your insurer. insurer. Yeah. But as a shop and as a consumer, this is something that needs to be insisted upon in order to repair the car properly. If you don't do one or both, or I think both myself, sure. then there's uh, no telling. How do you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's going to probably take longer. But let's just say you only do a post to make sure it's good when it goes out the door. Okay. Well, how about you're doing the post when you're washing the car, getting it ready, and now it's got a bunch of codes in it that have to be cleared and stuff that has to be calibrated, and now you're scrambling to find a dealer or some way to get that done, when if you had done it up front, you would put that into your repair plan that you know you need to have it done. Right. And that would save you a bunch of time from the consumer standpoint and the, the shop standpoint. Sure. So it looks like back in 2017, uh, those pre-scans and post-scans... Yeah, weren't very popular. Not, not, not done very much. Weren't very popular. Uh, and, and if you go to the middle of the graph where it's highest, uh, that's back in 21. And interestingly enough, it looks like we're doing less than, than we, more. Than we were. Yeah. yeah. And, and not only that, if I'm reading this correctly, at the peak, they're only doing these scans... 60% of the time. 60% of the time. 60% of the time on a brand new or newer vehicle. That is cause for concern. Yeah. And you need to find a shop that is going to do these, and it's always best to have the manufacturer equipment. We have the Toyota Lexus, and that's the, by far the largest brand that we fix here. Yeah. Um, the, the factory scanner. Sure. Uh, there are some aftermarket scanners uh, not made by the manufacturer that can do a, a, a decent job. Okay. I, I have no way to rate them. So uh, the safest thing to do is to go with the OEM product if you can. Okay. Um, so anyway, we have uh, roughly 40% of the shops that are not doing a pre and post scan or a pre or post scan on a brand new vehicle that has all those systems I showed you earlier. Yeah. Not all shops are created equal. Well, that's not this, the truth. This shows you right there. And then if you go from one to three years old, you know, it gets slightly less. Uh, but the one to three year old, all the, this technology has been out there for a while. Sure. I mean, you got cars with sensors across the rear bumper and the front bumper that that's a very common thing that was one of those sensors that uh, uh, was on that picture that's been around a very long time right I'm, I'm looking at the you know obviously when it drops off after six years seven years and older uh, drops off radically and but well, they still had the stuff then and there were still calibrations that needed to be done absolutely and I'm thinking, how many of us are keeping our cars for seven years or longer these days? It's more and more. Yeah. It's more and more. So if that isn't troublesome enough, we're going to go to the next slide. Wait, there's more? There's more. So the next slide uh, from the same source um, is, this is on calibrations, reprogram, or flashing the system. Uh, so... I'm going to focus on the calibrations. Okay. Most of these sensors need to be calibrated. Because if you take it off and put it back on, first off, you've disconnected it. 
Yeah, so it's lost communication. But many of them don't give the computer where they are or what direction they're pointing. Okay. They only say if they're communicating or not. Right. Many of them, you have to actually measure, are they facing the right direction at the right angle? Because a one degree difference, you know, down the road is a, is a 10 degree difference. You, you could miss a blind spot in yeah. a big way. Yeah. And all of these sensors have to be where they're supposed to be. Sure. And so when, when we get the calibrations now on current year or newer, the first group, Wait, is that? we're under 18% of that being on estimates. I was just going to ask you, are those numbers right? That so now we're talking about almost 80% of the shops or the estimates being produced. Don't are, include? But don't include calibrations. How is that possible on a brand new vehicle? Now, I know there's folks out there that, uh, you know, don't, don't agree with me, John. <laughs> but, you know, those, those are the numbers, and you want somebody that is going to fix your car properly. Yes. And fixing your car properly includes making sure that all these items work. As they're supposed to. Yeah. There's procedures that need to be followed right down to disconnecting the battery and reconnecting the battery. You know, and and even across Toyota and Lexus, depending what year, make, model, and equipment it has, there's a time from when you turn the ignition off to when you can dis disconnect the battery safely. Yes. Because it it's it, it's like you're the computer in your house. Right. It's downloading and saving and doing all the stuff it's supposed yeah, to do. Just because you turn the power button off doesn't mean it's done working. Right. So when you turn the key off, yeah. imagine that you're at your computer and it says, oh, I'm doing an update. Don't turn your computer off. And you say, ah, I'm going to turn it off anyway. What are the chances it's going to run right when you turn it back on? Bad things happen. Bad things happen. There are reasons that these times are prescribed. There's some cars that are up to three minutes, up to five minutes, that it takes for everything to settle and memorize yeah. and know what's going on. And all these procedures are incredibly important. Yeah. They are to me. They should be to you. You should be making sure that you take it to a shop that knows your vehicle and knows the process. 100%. So you don't have gremlins when you get your, you know, get your vehicle back. And we started talking about that AMC gremlin I had in 1973. You do not want yeah, that don't coming want back. Gremlins. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I just thought I'd share some of this data yeah. here with you. And, and this, is, this is a way to interview a shop and get a sense, do they really understand your vehicle and the different things that, need, that it's equipped with to begin with. Yeah. And how are they going to ensure that all those systems are working properly when you pick your vehicle up? Because a lot of these things don't turn lights on your dash. They just don't operate yeah. the way they're supposed to. So just to, to wrap this up, put a bow on it here, Rob. Uh, if I were to come into this shop mm -hmm. and say, you know, with this chart and say, hey, look, uh, I see that only 17% uh, uh, of the shops are out there actually doing these calibrations. What is the percentage of uh, calibrations that you run through this shop? Almost every car today, and we, we fix mostly new cars, right? Uh, newer cars, uh, you know, but e even 16s have, uh, <clears throat> and they have for many, many years, the passenger seat weight, the occupant de detection system. Yeah. We scan that to make sure it's got the, the right setting. Because right. if you get bumped, whether somebody's in that seat or not in that seat, it can jar the, the settings for that. Sure. And that will determine airbag timing, if it goes off, doesn't go off, all sorts of things, depending on the weight of the person or the item that is on the front seat. You take something and put it on your front seat, like a briefcase that's full of bricks. Yeah. It's going to think somebody's sitting there. Yeah. Uh, and that bag is going to blow, or it should blow. Keep your bricks in the back seat yeah. or uh, in the trunk area. Uh, and you can find out more about that in your owner's manuals. All of them yeah. talk, if you go to the, the passenger seat uh, occupant detection, you bet. It, it will tell you that 
exactly how it works and you know kind of what pounds need to be they say never put a child in the front seat right. and so on and so forth so you all, know all important these are all important things and that has been in cars for a very long past this oh yeah so yeah, yeah. and and we check those and make sure that they're calibrated exactly to what the manufacturer says they should be yeah so well Thank you. Thank yep. you for bringing this to yep. us. My friend, happy Saturday to you. To you, my dear friends. Thanks for tuning in. Really a pleasure to do this for you. Have an amazing week.